for coffee. So lots to squeeze in today, including our next guest on the show right now, Luke Janssen. Hey. Good morning to you, Luke. Morning. And as we said, pleasure to meet you. Yeah, bon dia. Pleasure to meet you. Yeah, thank you for having uh, having me on the show. Well, we thought we must because you're, you're, you've got an exciting product. Part of the roundtable discussions the other night were how difficult it is getting one's taxation affairs in order in Portugal. Mm. It is a pain um, from which you are um, helping people, uh, yeah, it would appear and, now. And also, Luke was the most chill person at the evening a couple of nights ago. He was, ago. wasn't he? And that fair. instantly <laughs> made me want to, like, <laughs> I was writing notes. and I was just shy. Get Luke on the show. <laughs> Pass the note to Carl. <laughs> True, true. Yeah. And, there, and there you were, uh, the wonderful Alison Baxley, who's organising the Portugal Brown yeah. Virtual Summit. Last day today, my my uh, talk is on there today. I think you've already done yours, haven't you, Luke? Mrs M's done hers? Yeah. Uh, Luke, yeah, I've already done mine. Yeah. Right. So it was, is, Yeah, it was a great summit. It was. It's really well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, brilliant job. So what was it uh, you spoke about? What is it you do? Yeah, so uh, I spoke about uh, taxes in, uh, in Portugal, um, but how that interacts with... Um, you know, any other you know, tax system abroad. Um, so that, there's a lot of confusion when it comes to taxes, you know, when you come to Portugal, um, what, what happens to the NHR? Do I qualify? Um, do I have to do a whole um, kind of restructure of my life in terms of the income that I'm getting, you know, becoming a freelancer or not? So, like how much can I save with these taxes or actually am I getting worse off? And so there's a lot of local tax advisors that do, you know, very well and uh, or like are very experienced, of course, and are very knowledgeable. But I found that um, it, it would, like there is a lack of international glue in the in the world where um, the, it depends a lot on where you're coming from, on like whether it can be beneficial to you. And so we do an international approach. We look at where you're coming from and then how that works locally. So that's what I talked about. Um, and it's really just geared for, for immigrants, expats, people that are always on the move, you know, have real estate in another country. Tricky stuff. Yeah, yeah absolutely. It's interesting because you were just mentioning um, backstage that you've just moved here from um, California. And um, I know from some of the people that we have on your show that um, the, the tax situation in California is really unattractive <laughs> to a lot of people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hi, is that what you mean? Yeah. Well, um, and um, yeah, there's a lot of considerations, I think, you know, um, it, it's, Portugal seems very attractive by comparison to a lot of Californians right now. Hmm. Definitely, yeah, there have been increasing also property taxes and it's pretty hard to, uh, you know, to already make a decent income there, right, with the yeah. cost of living, so. Yeah. Indeed, indeed. Uh, and so, um, to title.io, not .com or .pt, but yeah. .io. Um, yeah, it's very sound... tech startup-y. <laughs> well, that's what I was going to ask you. Um, I mean, that's what you are, isn't it? You, uh, the other aspect of your mm -hmm. business, as I understood it from talking to you the other evening, is that you're um, tech-driven. And now uh, yeah. the, the, the scene, the accountancy scene, as I think um, our other colleague, Vashko was saying on the round table is that accountants in Portugal are very old school and quite technology averse. And you'll see this, right? If you go into finance us, there are like, there are uh, ring binders from the 1950s behind the staff yeah. there, aren't they? And you, even if you go into a contabilista, you know, the bookkeepers and accountants of Portugal, they're very proud of the array of, of box files and, and binders behind them, aren't they? From wall to wall. It seems to be the sort of interior design standard of a Portuguese office is look at all this paper. <laughs> we are serious about what we do here. We've got lots of paper. You're coming at it from another angle, right? Tech driven, maybe app driven, and people can <laughs> work online with you rather than having to make a pilgrimage to the office every time they have a tax. <laughs> That's so true. I love that all the all the um, examples that you give because those are all my experiences. I've got exactly <laughs> yeah. the same experience, and also with finances. Whenever I log in, you know, with my NIF and everything, then I and I have to find something of a property that I'm renting or rather, you know, that I bought or stuff. Then it's like I have to go on all the services and go through this digital binder. It's not a, really an improvement. <laughs> it's a physical binder. It's yeah. like digital binder, and I still don't know what I'm clicking on. It's yeah. it's quite hard. But, is um, that what, do you think that's what happens when um, <clears throat> a Portuguese company or the Portuguese government have a meeting with the web designers um, and they say, OK, so what is it you want to do? Well, we want to put all these papers online. And, and, and basically, that's what they, they don't take advantage of the technology opportunity, do they? They just transfer everything. I mean, if you look at the finances portal, it does look like something yeah. that is a lot of paper squeezed into a, a pen drive, maybe. That <laughs> yeah, it's... 
like I, I do have to give them a little bit of credit because they make it such that you can see your, you know, like, um, what is it? Any requests that are outstanding. And yes. of course, there's no updates on, you know, when it's due or what, when it's like supposed to be yes. done. But yes. at least you can, you can submit a form digitally. So I think they just like slapped on a form on all yes. these like local, like physical binders. And then yes, someone gets indeed. an email saying, okay, there's a new thing coming in. That, well, that's what they that, this is my imagination, of course. It's probably more complex. And I may be, you know, being yeah. a bit uh, not nice to people who work there and stuff like that. But it's, it's definitely for immigrants also, you know, where Portuguese is not their first language. Yeah. Um, it's, it's not an easy system. No. Absolutely no. right. Absolutely. I, I suspect, um, like, I, I, I suspect the way I'm using it is kind of similar to how a lot of people use it is I've found what I need to find. And then every time I need to use it, I go to like this, not a little spreadsheet, but a little reminder to myself of what I click each time. And I just go through the same thing. I have no idea about the whole vast array of what it does. I just follow like, say, three, you know, like yeah, three exactly. ways to submit my green paper, like my green ticket or whatever it's called. But Is this all on a little folder on your Internet Explorer? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Luke, what I didn't get from Wednesday night, um, because we, you know, it was more about chatting around um, migration rather than our personal histories. I want to find out how how you came to get involved in what you're doing. Like, what makes somebody wake up one morning and think, "Wow, I want to help people with their tax internationally." Like, how how did you go from like being <laughs> like you know, waking up one day to, to going down that route? Yeah, that's a good question. I, I also question myself uh, every day, like, <laughs> why, that, why that happened, <laughs> especially with taxes. No, but I am, um, first and foremost, someone who, like, is very technology-driven. Yeah. So I'm very coming in from, from, like, logic, like an angle of logic. Yeah. Um, and I like to build projects and companies that have to do with international infrastructure. And that is all the connecting. Oh, that's the thing that I get really excited about. So as someone who has who moved a lot, I've lived in the States, um, in Australia, and in, in Portugal and the Netherlands, and, and having projects um, or have started projects in different places, tax has always haunted me. It's mm -hmm. like, okay, yes. now that I go to a new place, like, what the hell do I do? Find a new local tax advisor? Then I, I don't know if they're good, right? I have to find them through a network. Then they have to talk to my tax advisor in my local country um, because they don't really understand the international complexities. And then it becomes this ping pong game of like, I'm the one in the middle and I have no idea what's going on. Am I paying too much? I don't know. It's always become this too big of a thing um, for someone who just wants to move, right? And just wants to explore the world in a way. Yeah. And so that really bugged me. So my previous company was about international credit like the data of credit that you can move that across borders and this one is for taxes and so that also gives away that i am not officially a tax advisor i am a i'm the ceo of title and yeah. like you know the strategy and i'm combining the tech side making beautiful ui making everything such that it makes sense for users like you and me right that yes. we see when is something due what did i pay for what is the scope and who who is helping me locally um what is the international implications and that we make that super clear um, so you know what you're going to get and why it's helpful. And not like, oh, let's just start some advice for like, you know, 200, 300 euros an hour and we'll see where it ends. And then not really sure what it's going to help you for. Yeah. <laughs> That's Amazing. the goal. So, yeah, I'm, 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 a, tech, I'm a tech startup founder. Um, but, of course, in our team, we have uh, tech advisors in our team. And then we work, uh, of course, with local people that we have uh, vetted with, um, with pretty um, tough criteria to make sure that um, it's one cohesive international team. So we're in like 30 plus countries. At the end of this month, uh, which is only two, uh, one to two weeks away, we'll be in 33 countries. Wow. That's incredible. That's amazing. You that just added an job. extra three countries in the space of a month. That's impressive. And, and yeah. you're a facilitator of these things. That's the right way to use technology, isn't it? It's not to replicate what we do in the physical world necessarily, although lots of people are trying to do that, obviously, at the moment. Mm -hmm. Um, but um, yep. to, see, to see how a, an earthbound problem, a dearthly earthly problem can be sorted out using technology, um, which, is, which is what you're doing. I think that's a fantastic For use sure. of technology. Can we do a little bit of a use case then? Because I think you, you hit the nail on the head where, okay, fair enough, you've got a Portuguese tax advisor. If you're lucky enough to find someone who, who you can work with, 
Um, and then you've got your American tax advisor, because all Americans have to file their taxes. They, they, you, they never let you go, do they, from the American side? And yeah. each of those might be okay, but it's the um, connection between the two. And you're left managing that anxiety, aren't you? Because the Portuguese guy will say, oh, no, 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 I can't possibly talk about American tax because they're worried about possibly being fined or sued or something like that. And the American person says, I don't know about Portuguese stuff. You're on your own with that. And then each individual yep. becomes a facilitator of that relationship. And obviously, everyone's ultimately responsible for their own taxes. But that's a really difficult position to be in. And that's what you're coming in and dealing with, is it? How would you deal with an yep. American in that condition, for example? I think you hit the nail better on the head than I did. I was kind of hitting the nail a bit more crooked. You're just like, this is exactly what it is. <laughs> yeah, it's great. So uh, I think that is a really good example. Um, maybe what a lot of people are familiar with who are experts and, you know, um, have stuff international um, is these services like My Expat Taxes or yes. in the Netherlands there's one called Blue Umbrella that I know of um, or Greenback why is, Taxes. Why is it called Greenback I've heard of? David Greenback's very yep. helpful. Uh, what yeah, what, what do awesome. they call it? Blue Umbrella? For, for, is it just uh, one of those? Oh, I have no idea, to be honest. They saw on the way. I have no idea. Okay, sorry. It sounds, sorry. It sounds like a, like a sexy startup name, maybe. This Blue Umbrella. It oh, does, yeah. does, does. It's like, yeah, I want to buy some stock in Blue Umbrella. Sounds amazing. What do they do? <laughs> oh. um, yeah, yeah. They sorry, only sell sorry. Blue Umbrellas. So sorry to interrupt it. you with your Blue Umbrella then. No, it's, those are just services that people may be familiar with. Um, yeah. And they're really good services. Like, I have nothing bad to say again, uh, like, uh, like about them. They're amazing services. But the, the, the thing they they do is only do the local service for expats. So if you're an American, then you have your filing requirements for, uh, you know, a national um, in your, um, like in your country in the US. And so these services are like greenback, they can do that. They focus on expats that live abroad, American yeah. expats living abroad, but they leave you to your own devices in Portugal and the interaction or, or Spain or France or, you know, any country for that matter. And it makes sense because it's really complex. So yeah. to, in order to be an expert locally, and then also between all these countries and then in the country, it's virtually impossible. Uh -huh. So we, we so we flip it around and be only the international experts. Um, and then the locally, like we have tax advisors that then just feed in the information. And so we can kind of make, take a more um, unified approach. And so one example is if a American person um, comes to Portugal, right? And they, let's say they, work for themselves they're a freelancer a sole proprietor they move to portugal they still need to file in the us of course because they are a us citizen they apply for nhr they qualify for nhr sometimes people don't qualify they qualify for nhr but then you still need to work out how you're going to use the nhr yeah right so for example you cannot just keep your own income from the llc um, like sometimes um, and have you, you have like pay it out to yourself in Portugal because Portugal has a different approach to seeing what this LLC income looks like from a Portuguese perspective. Portugal may not see it as a sole proprietorship income. It may actually see it as regular income from like, you know, a salary because it's kind of a, a structure, an LLC. It's an incorporated entity it's because Portugal doesn't exactly have something that is similar to an LLC or the same to an LLC. They have similar things. And so there's all these interactions, right? How does the local authority look at that? And do they think it's exempt for, for like under NHR? Right? Mm -hmm. And so now you have someone in, in the US that has to talk about LLC, like how do we structure it? Is it actually, you know, an LLC with a partner? Am I just a, like, this, like the single director? What does the LLC do? Those are all things that are super important from the Portuguese perspective as well. Right. So now you have this interaction and someone needs to facilitate that. Someone yes. needs to have these two people talk to each other without you being in the middle, only when necessary. Of course, you need to provide yeah. information. And then on top of that, there are all these all these things with double taxation treaties, as they're called. There are these rules or these treaties, these agreements between most countries in the world that will um, stipulate if you as a regular person in the world you know you don't need to be a tax professional but as a regular person in the world, you yeah. have a let's say a house in in the states so let's say in california you move to portugal and now you're renting out the house that you previously that you previously lived in that income is generally taxed in the state where the house is so that's will be in, in the, you know california and in the states in general and then the double taxation treaty says that that is just exempt in portugal like specifically for real estate rental income. 
And there's all these rules on these agreements between, like, between a country, all these rules on dividends and all these things. So we take all of that in a melting pot, look at what the international applications are, and then bring in the local equities as such that this U.S. example, this person, um, knows how to set up their taxes when they come to Portugal, and also such that they, could, like, they can file um, every year, right? Because you also have to file in two countries. And yeah. there is dependencies there as well. Like, how, what do you write in your US one or what do you write in a Portuguese one? Brilliant. So that's, I think that's the, that's the most clear example from a US perspective. But, you know, like taxes are super complicated. So there's a lot of different income types and things that, um, yeah. you know, that is different. Well, there's a few things going on, aren't there? I think tax authorities around the world in, in, a, in a downturn, in a, in a challenging economy, they, they, they employ more people and they go after people mm -hmm. more don't they, to raise more tax revenue. Yeah, recently with the IRS in the US, right? Yes. I mean, the IRS yeah. have bought tanks and nuclear weapons, haven't they, to enforce taxation? <laughs> Um, anyway, uh, that was a joke. That was a joke. I'm not, didn't they not? Re well, they might. You'll be, get I, someone I in the yes, chat room. Did, that's right. How right very now. dare you say that about our lovely IRS? <laughs> Does anyone ever refer to the IRS as our lovely IRS? There will be some people. Politicians for do. Sure. Politicians do. Don't they? Um, but I, I, you know, this is wonderful what you're doing, and I think you are a disruptor. I, 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 I think that's part of the whole startup culture, isn't it? In as much as. Do you remember mm. when TurboTax came along and What's quick, TurboTax? quick QuickBooks? Grandma, you're still on Internet Explorer. Um, <laughs> these things changed how people related to the taxation authorities, didn't they? Because the tax people couldn't hold back any longer and say, well, we don't do that. They, all, people were using software to bring their data together and to give, crunch the numbers and then give them the, the number to pay. And you could you could present that, couldn't you, to a tax official and say, look, you know, this is what millions of people are doing now. This is what I have worked out. I owe you the tax professionals were using it as well. What you're doing, I think, could be quite a, a, a useful impact on the Portuguese system as well. The more and more people who use title, for example, the, then the tax people might open their, their eyes and ears to it and say, actually, this guy's got it figured out. This is actually less confusing for us as pro professionals inside the, not the industry, but inside the government as well. Is that part of your business plan? Can, and can I be a virtual board member? <laughs> you can always be a, bo uh, a board member, Carl. It'd be <laughs> great. You. Yeah, it would be fun as well. Uh, <laughs> it, is, it is not part of the business plan necessarily, but we do have, um, of course, an idea of um, if, if we just really grow this out in all these countries, right, and make a true dent and an impact in making tax experts locally super happy because they now also get much more transparency. Like we ask so much from the user upfront that there is much less to be questions on both sides. We like make this mismatch on expectations kind of go away in the beginning yeah. as well. Yeah. Um, and it's just technology aided. And of course we do a call with the user as well to make sure that we understand their case. Yes. And I think if that model works and, um, and it, it, it like we may have some impact in the future, yeah, on like local local policies, right? On like, hey, maybe they come to us for some advice for like, hey, how does it work in these countries? And can we assemble a team, maybe a research team, or I don't know what the uh, what the idea there um, is it like is going to look like. But if we truly make this a, a service that scales to the whole world, right, which we're in, in in the in the process of, yeah, I think of course I would love to have an actual voice in this in this in this realm. It'd be amazing. <laughs> And, and if you make it easier for people, I think that's what can happen, right? I, d I don't think disruption necessarily takes place from companies saying, we're going to disrupt you. I don't think people take kindly no. to that, do they? But if, if, people, if everyone involved feels some benefit and if a pain is being addressed successfully and efficiently, then, then they may well be open to it. And I, and I suspect in the taxation world that happens. And I think there's also, is there another thing here? I don't know what this phenomenon would be called, but professionals can often blame each other, can't they? So they, they might say, well, I've done my bit, but a guy over in Switzerland, he's dragging his feet. And sometimes that's a little bit of a grey area, I think, where professionals can be blaming each other and not necessarily taking responsibility for this happening. Your system could deal with that, couldn't it? I mean, if you're, if you're trading on the fact that our professionals work together to get you over the line and get you a good end result, that's a really good sales point, isn't it? Exactly. Exactly. We make sure that that interaction is baked in the system. Yeah. Fantastic. None of this. Yeah, well, it's, yeah. uh, her fault. She was doing that bit. <laughs> yeah, great. That's that's a really good thing that you're addressing there. So we yeah, wish thank you. I think so, but, too. It yeah. like solves it like solves my own pain from all of these travels and all of these migrations uh, that I've done. Yeah, um, right. So I hope it just it just, you know, you know, of course, we help a lot of people right now already. Like we've been live for around like with this product a year, but we've been existing for two years. 
Yeah. Um, so we've helped many people, but um, I think it's going to grow very quickly if we're going to really market in other markets as well. Right now we're targeting for marketing Portugal uh, and the US and then some other, other countries because we just cannot handle the load. We want to make sure the service is excellent. Yes. But um, yeah, but next year, you know, who knows? Oh, um, fantastic. For, uh, uh, it sounds to me like Carl is wrapping this up a little bit. <laughs> but before, you know me so well. <laughs> but before, um, <laughs> before he wraps this up, I just wanted to ask you, um, what, um, uh, like, where are most of your customers currently from? Are they mainly from the US and Canada or like... Um, mainly US, US and UK. Yeah. Right, okay. Coming into Portugal, um, but we also have, uh, but we love, because we still, we have, you know, 33 countries or yeah, almost 33 countries live. We have in almost all countries, we have users, yeah. but the biggest bulk comes from US Portugal, because that's where we're currently putting a lot of marketing efforts in, making sure that we are, um, very knowledgeable in that corridor. Of course, every corridor is knowledgeable, but like if you have, you know, hundreds of users in a month or one corridor, you're just generally getting more knowledgeable, you know, because it's yeah. so complicated. Yeah. Um, and so, but in every core, in every country we have users that are coming through um and we will market that in other countries next year um mm -hmm. yeah. we but like people find us just like organically because we do oh, seo on, uh, on google and yeah. having some webinars and talking about it uh, so. are you going to get a whole lot of word of mouth as well as soon as you start solving people's pain yeah. people love to, to share don't they mm -hmm. and there's this thing mm -hmm. in ai isn't there singularity the point of singularity that all many scientists and researchers are talking about apparently the Portuguese accounting singularity is when you get three Portuguese accountants in a room and they all agree, <laughs> which has never been known in the history of Portugal. So, yeah, Portuguese accounting singularity. We're, we're approaching that moment. And even CERN are helping with that because it's such a massive it's, problem. I also, yeah, I also heard that that's where the tiny black hole discoveries were made, right? The exactly. gravity of, Absolutely. of that mutual cohesion yes, is so yeah. big. I'm, it's probably quite dangerous being in a, in the, the same room as three uh, three Portuguese accountants. The God particle. Yeah, it's the God particle. Isn't exactly. It? Yeah, yes. it rarely it's it like rarely occurs. It's death and taxes. It's and God. Uh, <laughs> death, taxes, and God. <laughs> <laughs> the certainties of life. It's, it's really been fantastic to meet you this week and talk to you today. Uh, let's stay in touch because there are many people in our community I think who would benefit from your your services. Yeah, absolutely. Luke. Should yeah. get Luke on your community. Yeah, spread the word. Definitely. Yeah. Have, Is he on but, school? He's not in our GMP VIP. We'll send you a guest pass to that uh, later on. Amazing. Today. Thank you. So um, thank you so much for being here. Bon fin semana. And all the best. Bon sort with your fantastic project. Yeah, lots of love. Obrigado. Bon fin de semana. Thank you for having me. Ciao. Fantastic. Fantastic. There he goes. There's Luke.